All right, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to another Overtime. I'm your host, Nick Robbie, and we have a great show once again planned for you today. We'll vote for the top local high school football players so far in the season. We'll discuss the Phoenix Suns and their season outlook, and we have an exclusive interview with NEU Volleyball Head Coach Ken Murphy. We'll also get you ready, of course, as always, for the upcoming weekend in local sports action, but... I start by introducing my student co-host. How are you doing, Tressa? I'm doing great. How are you, Nick? I'm doing all right. How do you like the set? I love it. It's very colorful. It is. <laughs> it is very colorful. And so are we. We're going to talk some colorful Absolutely. sports sports talk and test your knowledge. You ready, Tressa? Oh, heck yeah. Are you? All right. I'm ready. I'm always ready. <laughs> Let's get it going. All right. First question. Who is the top high school football player here in Flagstaff? Tressa, why don't you start with this one? Alrighty, Nick, I've seen Coconino and Flagstaff High both play some ball this year, but I've got to give it to Coco senior running back, Austin Hare, who is carrying the team on his back. The 5'9", 180-pound running back is doing all he can despite the Panthers' 1-5 record. In this game, Hare had the play of the night. There he goes running for a 74-yard rushing touchdown. The week before against Kingman, Hare led the Panthers with 99 yards on 12 carries. Coco was on the road tonight against Prescott. Austin Hare looking to do some damage. I like that choice. Uh, Hare is a good choice, but I'm going to go on the other side with Flag High Eagles. Their man behind center, senior quarterback Kyle Wilson. The Eagles got a big sectional win against Mingus last week for the first time since 2005. And Wilson led the charge with two touchdown passes to his two senior receivers, Dylan Gifford and Dylan Matthews, finished with 231 yards in the air and no interception. Flagstaff is 2-0 in their section, so uh, they may not have a great overall record, but they're looking pretty good in their own conference. A lot of that credit goes to the quarterback, so I like Flagstaff. I like Kyle Wilson. They're looking pretty good. And I like Friday Night Lights, so, I mean, we just got to give it to some high school football, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, there's always a game on Friday. All right, next up, next question, NAU Volleyball. Who is the Lady Jacks MVP? I'm going to uh, start this one out, I guess, and I'm probably going to start uh, with uh, last year's standout freshman, Janae Vanderplug. She's a sophomore now and showing no signs of slowing up. She leads the attack for the Lady Jacks, and she's the kill leader for the team with over 150 kills, over 15 matches. She leads the team in kills per set and third in digs per set. She was an all-Big Skies team Honorable mention last year, but this year I think she'll make the conference team no problem. Yeah, Janae, she's definitely a, a team member, but I've seen the Lady Jacks in action and nothing tops the tomahawk spike of middle blocker Sydney Kemper. This girl is killing it on the court. Last week against Portland State, Kemper recorded her second double double of her career with a match best 14 kills and a career high 11 digs. In the three match homestand, Kemper averaged 3.44 kills three digs, and a sizzling 474 average. Are you feeling the heat yet, Nick? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling the heat. <laughs> a lot of stats there, but uh, both those players are great athletes and a big reason why NAU Volleyball is uh, tops in the conference. They're I a lot of fun right to now. watch. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to watch. All right, well, question number three. How does the NAU football team pan out against Sacramento State tomorrow? Tressa, you're the student. Mm. What do you think? Are they going to do it? Oh, they have to. I mean, after <laughs> last week's first Big Sky loss of the season to Montana State, 36-7, NAU is making a comeback. All the right. Hornets, huh, undefeated in the Big Sky, cannot compete against NAU's monstrous defense. The Lumberjacks lead the Big Sky defense with 326.4 yards and 164 passing yards. And all four NEU interceptions have been returned for touchdowns, including last week's only score by linebacker Austin Haskett. Yeah, I'm giving this to the Jacks. All right, well, uh, far be it for me to doubt the Lumberjacks. I think they're definitely capable of bouncing back from last week's loss to the Bobcats, but they need to get their swagger back on offense. I mean, running back Zach Bowman has been slow to start this season, finished with just 26 yards on nine rushes last week. That's just not going to get it done. They need to be firing on all cylinders tomorrow on offense as well as that, uh, that strong defense that they've established if they want to stay in the path to the playoffs. So I hope they win. Obviously, they're on the road, so uh, hopefully their offense can kick it into gear. Absolutely. All right, on to the pros. The Phoenix Suns, they were in town in Flagstaff last weekend for training camp, and how do you think the Suns are going to pan out this season? Well, um... Nick, why don't you take this? Okay, I'll start. Okay, well, I think they've definitely made some good improvements from the team that finished last in the Western Conference last year. They were terrible, so the good news is that I don't think they can be much worse than last year's team. They acquired Eric Bledsoe from the Clippers in the offseason. He looked strong in the backcourt alongside Goran Dragic. I think they'll, they're still a couple years from making a big playoff run, but in rookie center, Alex, if Alex 
Lynn can develop and stay healthy, they do have a team that has a lot of potential under new head coach Jeff Hornsick. You know, and I did catch the scrimmage on Saturday, and I'm liking what I see, Nick. The Suns with 10 new players, the franchise saying, out with the old, in with the young. Ex-Pacer center Miles Plumley excited the crowd with three dunks in the first quarter and had 17 points, and Gerald Green making six three-pointer shots, totaling 20 points in just 21 minutes. 29th overall pick, 19-year-old Archie Goodwin playing, and Alex Len with six rebounds. And, of course, the veterans helping the newbies out. I think the team is playing well and should redeem themselves after this season, after last year's 25-57 and 57 record. Well, everybody see, feels good in preseason, but we'll just have to see when they open up the season and how mm -hmm. they play. All right, just 30 seconds left. We take it to Major League Baseball playoffs. Who do you have going to the World Series? Tressa. Oh, I'm a baseball girl, but I always say whoever's playing hot right now is making it to the series. I'm calling the Dodgers and the Red Sox. I'm an Angels fan, but... The Dodgers are too hot right now. L.A. can rely on Clayton Kershaw, who is arguably the hottest pitcher in baseball right now. Carl Crawford with two homers in the NLCS. And the Red Sox offense has so much depth, these two would really put on a good series. Yeah, as, I, as much as I hate to give the Dodgers any credit, I would have to agree with you, Tressa. L.A. looks formidable with Kershaw and that stacked lineup, and the Red Sox seem to be playing the best. <laughs> oh, they've yeah. been the best team in the American League all year long, and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't look like they're going to stop anytime soon. I agree with you there. All right, well, stick around. Brooke Cowell met up with the first-year head coach, Ken Murphy, to talk about how the volleyball team has been doing this season and what to expect from our new head coach. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Terry Markson. As seasons change, so does the inventory at Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. To make room for the 2014 models, we're clearing the lot, and that means great deals for you on our 2013s. Right now, you'll find rebates up to $10,000 on select Chevrolet models. Choose from a full line of vehicles, including the totally redesigned 2014 Silverado 1500. You can always count on our same relaxed, no-pressure environment. Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac, real hometown value. Hi, I'm Lee from the Ski House in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I'd like to show you a little bit of our ski store. We've got the newest products for 2013 from Line, Armada, Rosignol, Scott, Marker, Full Tilt, and many others. If you see something on our wall and you want to try it, take part of our demo program. We have hundreds of demo skis you can try before you buy for as low as $45 a day. So come on up to Flagstaff when you're going out to the Arizona Snow Bowl, and you can be as stylish as our model Holly. She's got some of the latest helmets from Burn, Spy, Nomus, and Pants from Sessions. Not just stylish, but also technical. Ski Oz, we got you covered, any budget. All right, welcome back to the Overtime. We've got a real treat for you today in the Coach's Corner. Sports reporter Brooke Cowell sat down with new head volleyball coach Ken Murphy for the NAU Lady Jacks to tell us what the team hopes for this season. I'm here with the new head volleyball coach for NAU, Ken Murphy, and he's going to tell us a little bit of how he got to NAU and why he picked NAU, and how are you liking Flagstaff so far? Oh, I love it. I like, um, obviously it's beautiful up here. I like the weather. Um, I like all the outdoorsy stuff. You know, I'm really into, you know, hiking and mountain biking, those kind of things, and so it, it fits me in a lot of ways, actually. Very cool. And you came from UTEP, El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm. Why NAU from Texas? Well, I think you look at it from a bunch of reasons. Professionally, I think I just think we can do a really good job here. I think there's some um, some things about NAU where I think we can atta attract really top recruits. I think we have some good players already, but I think we can keep attracting more top recruits. Um, but also, I, I think you know they're investing in volleyball in a really good way. That they're making volleyball important here. That um, they want us to compete at the top of the conference, maybe even move into the national scene a little bit. And I like being on board with that. But also, I just, you know, personally, I think Flagstaff is a great place for me and my family. I think um, it's beautiful here. It's a great place to have young kids. Um, just the small college town, mountain town environment is really wonderful for us. Okay, now I'm going to go back a little bit. What got you into coaching in the first place? Um, well, it's kind of a family thing. Um, I have an aunt who was on the national team, was coaching college when I was coming up, and I was kind of a gym rat, really. And <laughs> um, We didn't have high school volleyball where I was at, but... Um, I was just around the game from a really young age. And so um, just one opportunity led to another. I think when I was in college, I didn't know if I was going to be good enough to be a college coach, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I just kind of moved up through the ranks. My very first job was coaching a middle school team. And then I coached a freshman team and a JV team. And just eventually got to the point where this could be a career for me. And obviously, we're in kind of a tough conference. What mm -hmm. teams are you really focusing on to beat? to get into first place? Well, we know who the we know that Portland State's good. We know Idaho State, um, Northern Colorado's been good. North Dakota seems to be doing well this year. 
Um, but really most of the time we just focus on us and just being the best us that we can be. And we kind of rely on the idea that if we train and get better and uh, perform at our best capabilities that we can compete with anybody. And so we don't put a lot of emphasis on one match over another, but we definitely, we know who the best teams are, but we try to approach them all the same. Definitely, and you won, you're now five and one in mm -hmm. conference, mm -hmm. tied for second with Portland State. Mm -hmm. um, what are your hopes for the rest of the season? Uh, kind of like I just mentioned, you know, I, I think we just want to keep getting better. You know, our goal is to win the conference tournament at the end of November. And we know that between now and then, there's just a lot of challenges in between us and that goal. And we just have to keep focusing on us, keep getting better, take, keep learning these little challenges that will help us improve. And um, if we do that, I think the record takes care of itself. Um, and really, then we get closer to the thing we want, which is to win this conference and to go to the NCAA tournament. Okay, and last question, but what is your favorite memory as a coach so far? Um, there's some really good ones so far. I mean, I've only been here for a short time, and it's such a good group of uh, kids, and um, I enjoy being with them just in the gym every day, to be honest, at practice and just on the road trips and things like that. But I think the win we had against Idaho State was probably the best one we've had so far in terms of we had a lot of adversity. We had some injuries at the time. Um, we really had to fight for it. And it came down to a 20 to 18 in the fifth game kind of a score. And so it was a great environment. It was really exciting to win. But also it was a lot about just our grittiness and our toughness as a team. And it showed that we had made a lot of progress so far in the first few months. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. And good luck with the rest of your season. All right, big thanks goes out to Coach Murphy for coming into the studio midseason. Coach Murphy and the Lady Jacks left yesterday for their matchups against Montana and Montana State this weekend. Stick around, we'll have your weekend sports schedule after the break. For over 20 years and with more than 65,000 success stories, Coconino Community College's commitment to the educational pipeline is vital to your future. My name is Sheila Holohorn. I study mechanical engineering and train as a U.S. Air Force pilot and officer in the CCC to NAU program, which helps students like me transition from the community college to NAU. Upon completion, I'll be giving back by defending our country, and that's why I support CCC. With your support, Coconino Community College will remain efficient, effective, and excellent. I've tried all kinds of TV services. The phone company wasn't cutting it, so I cut them. Spotty Satellite? Nah, that dish wasn't appetizing. But the all-new Suddenlink? It comes with free HD and a picture so sharp, it makes real life look lame. Now I have up to 300 channel choices, earloads of digital music, 10,000 on-demand titles, and new TiVo stream that turns my tablet into a TV and lets my DVR take road trips. I've seen the future of TV, and the future is easy. With not a lot of high school sports occurring this weekend, there's still a jam-packed weekend with the Lumberjacks. But the NPA boys soccer team will be playing Grand Canyon at home on Saturday at 11 a.m. The Spartans only have five games left for their season. After the girls game tonight at Sacramento State, the NAU women's soccer team will be taking on Portland State on the road this Sunday at 1 o'clock. The Lumberjacks have a record so far of 6-3-3 three, and, three, and, are, and are fifth in the Big Sky with a 2-1 conference record. The NAU football team is on the road again tomorrow at Sacramento State. They will take on the Hornets at 6.05 p.m. after losing to the Montana State Bobcats 36-7 last weekend. Their current Big Sky record is 1-1. One one. The NAU women's volleyball team will spend their weekend in Montana playing the Montana State Bobcats tonight as their game has already started at 6 o'clock. And tomorrow they will take on the Montana Grizzlies at 6 as well. The NAU women's tennis team has taken a break from Flagstaff and is enjoying the city life of Las Vegas. They are participating in the Intercollegiate Tennis Association for the Mountain Region Championships all weekend long. Over on the green, the NAU golf team is in sunny Palm Desert, California for the Wyoming Cowgirl Desert Intercollegiate, Intercollegiate and it will be the rest of this weekend. So good luck, Lumberjacks. And that's all for your previews, so back to you guys at the desk. Uh, just a little bit left. Uh, you going to watch some football this weekend? You got it. It's Sunday. A little, a little NFL. Mm -hmm. All right. Who do you think? Uh, do you think Cardinals can be able to beat the 49ers? Well, I have the 49ers defense on my fantasy team, so I'm really pulling for them, Nick. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always pulling for the Cardinals. I think they might just they might just do it, but man, their offense has been awful. So yeah. hopefully they can step it up and get a big <laughs> win against the 49ers. But 49ers are pretty good. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us this Friday. We'll be back with you next Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody.